Good morning, everybody. Guess what day it is? It's boat prep day, meaning it's time to get the boats ready to get out on the water again. We're up here in the Northeast, but we've been dealing with a winter, a brutal winter with a lot of snow, a lot of freezing cold air, and these boats, one of them anyway, is kept outside. We have one that's kept indoors, heated garage, very nice, but we don't have room for both of them in there. So we have to keep one outside, but we do a preparation of that boat to ensure that none of the gear in there gets damaged. We prep the engine for winter, which is the Evinrude, and the Evinrude has, uh, that's a two-stroke by the way, that has a, a process that helps protect it. We also have a, a Honda four-stroke on there that we also prep for the winter, and that's a little kicker that we use uh, when we're doing some trolling. But we prep the boat prior to the winter by pulling out all the gear that, that could be damaged by freezing cold weather. And a lot of that's right here. A lot of this is stuff that's safety gear. And some of it is just stuff you need to have on the boat to perform regular maintenance, to protect it, flares, etc., etc. So we're going to go through some of those things right now. But we're going to be pulling out the boat we keep outside today. And we'll film some of that to show you what we do. We, uh, we keep it up on jacks, the whole shamal. So you'll, you'll see the whole thing. All right, let's start with some of the stuff we do keep on that boat, but we pull out. One of them is a toolbox in plastic. It's sealed. It's got all the tools you need to do maintenance on that boat. If you run into something, changing plugs, changing nuts, bolts, screws, small toolbox. Doesn't need to be big, doesn't need to hold, have a whole bunch of stuff in it, but you need to have a good set of tools. Another piece of gear. I don't know if everybody carries this. To troll a boat, you need to have it. Patch. You got a flat on the road, you got a nail on that tire, whether it be the vehicle or the boat, this is something that's going to get you through the day. So you need to get a tire patch. The next thing to keep on the boat, and I don't know if everybody does this, but these are jumper cables. How many times you've been out on the water, that engine goes off and on, off and on all day long. The engine battery I'm primarily talking about, not the, start, not the uh, trolling motor, but the, the, starter bo the starter motor for the engine. You need to jump that bugger. You can use your existing trolling motor to jump it from, or you can use a power pack, which you don't need cables. We keep a power pack on board as well, for just those reasons. But the jumper cables, doesn't take up much space. Engine goes, the, the engine battery goes bad, hook it up to your starter motor battery, uh, battery, and off you go. So you're ready, it's ready to get to point B. The next thing we do, or have, this is a complete set of clothes. For both winter and summer, hey, let's face it, sometimes you fall in the water. <laughs> you know, especially in the bays, because we do take our boats to the bays. That's, you know, that's, that's ocean water. And it's not nice if you stand around there all day long if you fall in and uh, with wet clothes. It's just if the water is cold. We vacuum seal it in bags like this and we keep it on the boat all year. It stays dry, it stays protected, you get chucked in the water, you got a full change of clothes in here, including underwear and socks. Do yourself a favor. Put a set of clothes on your boat. Then we have some lubricants, WD-40. Everybody has to have WD-40 on their boat. You just cannot get away with not having this stuff on your boat. It protects everything, it loosens everything. This is great stuff. You can use it for bait lure. <laughs> some guys do. They say it works. We never have, but it might work. But we always keep a can of it. And another thing we do, because it's a wet environment and salt water, we do take our boats on the salt water, and we'll go into that a little bit later. But we put it in a plastic bag. The salt water gets out these cans, rust time. Put them in a baggie, seal it. Roll all the air out of it. Seal it. Protect it. Salt water gets out of it, even fresh water. If it sits in there for any length of time down one of your lockers at the bottom, it's going to get rusty. It might not work. Keep it in a plastic bag. The next thing we have is called 656 Marine Lubricant. We take our boats uh, on, in, in the back bay, which is salt water again, and even for fresh water, you should use this. This will protect that engine. We pull it out at the end of the day, 
not every time, maybe once a month, will completely spray that engine with this stuff. It will not damage wiring. It will not damage anything in that engine. It's made to protect it against corrosion, especially salt water environments. Good stuff. Now, a lot of guys use WD-40 to spray their wiring, but we heard stories where this stuff could have an adverse impact on the wiring. We don't want to go there. <laughs> Next thing we keep on board, carburetor cleaner. We use it on that little pain in the butt four stroke we have, believe it or not, to sometimes get it started. Uh, we've been monkeying with that thing for a long time to figure out why it's so hard to get started. And sometimes you need to have some help in this stuff. Keep it on board, a couple of squirts in the carburetor throttle body, although it is uh, injectors, but there is a, 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 throttle, a throttle area in there, we think. Whatever, we spray it in there. We're not mechanics, <laughs> we spray it in there, boom, thing will start right off. We also keep this, because it's can in a plastic baggie. Again, we're not professional engine guys. We know how to change plugs, but that's about the extent of it. And changing oil. Alright, put it in a plate, put it in a baggie. Get all the air out of it, roll that bugger. Get all the air out of it, protect it. We do the same thing with this because it's metal with a can. Put it in a baggie, keep it in the locker. Water gets in there, you're going to be protected. And that's what you want. You want to protect this stuff. Because we've had the experience of not doing this and at the end of the season pulling it out or being in, pulling it out even during the season to use it, and it's a rust bucket. Nothing works. So we stuff it again. We change these bags every season. Roll the air out of it. Seal it. Next. Plastic container. I've seen a lot of boats where the gear clutches flares and all the, you know, the safety equipment that you keep around a boat is scattered in the lockers. Just hang around in there. But this is, you know, we have light sticks in here, we've got batteries, again, we've got the flares, we've got to make sure that it's a current date. Safety requirements in Jersey are you have to have current, current flares. And if you don't, pick a time. But make sure your flares are up to date. They might look good, and they probably are good, but the guys on the boat with the red lights on them, they don't care. They look for the dates. If the date isn't current, ticket time. But we have a plenty of container for that, which is watertight. Again, keep the water out. Even though it's in a lobby, you think it's protected, water gets in there. And then we have this one. This one we have fuses, plugs, uh, saw blades, some uh, extra tools, fuses. I mean, all this stuff is gears for your uh, trailer, and, you know, bearings, everything is kept in here. And again, watertight plastic container, everything is organized and it's kept in one spot. So you, you can go to it, pull it out, we've got names on here, what's in here, everything. You don't need to hunt around in your locker for this. Okay, we told you we clean up, we take our boat to salt water, right? And we do. And it's aluminum, both of them. Aluminum is a, probably not the best boat to use in salt water environments. <laughs> no question about it. We know it. But we like to do a little salt water. We don't go into the big ocean. We go into the bays. But it's, nevertheless, it's still salt water. But every time we go there, we thoroughly wash that boat down. I mean thoroughly. And we even wash it down with this kind of soap. Turtle X, super foamy car wash. It protects the boat. We do the inside and the outside, the trailer, the tires, everything gets a solid wash of this stuff. And that's without fail. So if you've got a little in a boat and you're in slow water, you need to wash that bugger thoroughly. And we do. One of the guys suggested that I revisit this lubricant that I, was mentioned, I mentioned earlier about coating your engine, especially when you're in a, a salt water environment, is this CRC Marine 656. And this stuff 
starts wet engines, frees rusted parts, and protects against corrosion. We thoroughly soak our engines at least three times a year with this material just to protect it and prevent any headaches down the road. Again, this is CRC Marine Lubricant. 6-56 multi-purpose lubricant. Do yourself a favor, coat your engines thoroughly with this. It'll eliminate some headaches down the road. Lastly, not lastly, but also, safety equipment, in addition to the flares I mentioned earlier that we keep locked up in a watertight container, we carry two extinguishers on our boat. That's two. You never know. Small ones, they come stock with the boat. We wanted a bigger one as well because you never know how much you're going to need. And both these things are stored on our boat, but we take them off every winter because we don't want them sitting out there all, all, all winter long. So we bring them indoors. And both our boats are equipped with these canisters. All right, let's talk about real prep. Now we do this before or at the end of the season. Oh, one more thing, so I don't forget. This is Permatex Anti-Seize Lubricant. Permatex. We put, you know, on, on your engine, you got the wing nuts that tighten it to the transom. And at the end of the year, especially again if you're in a marine environment, and even once or twice in a marine environment, it doesn't matter. That equipment's going to rust. It's going to be coated with all kinds of salt and crap on it. You'll never get those things off. Do yourself a favor. Coat them with this. This will, will prevent that from happening. All this, you know, all the, you know what to think. The wing nuts that you tighten the engine to the transom with. Make sure they're thoroughly coated with this. This will eliminate a lot of headaches. All right. Real prep. We're equipment prep. At the end of the season, we give our reels a good work over. The rods are clean thoroughly, and the reels are oiled and lubed with grease. Here's a little jobby right here. See the little nozzle on there? It's a wire tip nozzle. We love the soil. This is by Liberty, all-purpose oil, synthetic, one fluid ounce. And this little job, it's like a syringe. You can get into all tight spots, all tight spots, without oil going all over the place. This is a great little tool of oil to keep around. We've got them all over. Keep them on the boat, keep them in our bags, keep them in the shop, they're all over. And a little little container of grease. This is by Penn. Precision reel grease. Both these things need to be around. Heading down to Pete's house. This is where the boat is kept outdoors. And put all the stuff in the truck. And we're gonna go down there and get that thing ready. And I'll try and film some of that so you see exactly what we do to store this boat. Now, if we're done lubricating the, the skier, the new Aris rod that we picked up recently, 7 foot 1 inch, medium, medium power, fast action. This feels like a really, really, really nice rod. And one of the guys, one of my visitors, suggested we try the Fluger bait caster. So we got one of these Flugers, 10 bearing, nice reel, and it feels well balanced and it's really light. So we're going to try this combination and see how it works. We put 15 pound braid on here, and this is Power Pro braid by the way, which we love. Slick, the slick, the slick uh, brand. Because it doesn't make that singing noise as it goes through the eyes. Smooth like mono. Power Pro, slick. I think it's Power Pro Slick 8. Good stuff. Okay. We're heading down to the boat now and get it off the jacks. And I keep these rods, by the way, hanging from my ceiling. I got a, I got a, I got a J hook up there. I, got a, we keep my, I keep my rods hanging from the ceiling. Gets them out of the way, they're not on the floor. I got J hooks, like that. <laughs> you just screw them in, and all you do is just slip one end on and it bounces its way perfectly up there. Let me see if I can show you this.
That's all my rods. Probably a little bit of overkill, right? <laughs> but you gotta have rods. Salt water, fresh water, bait casters, spinners. I keep them up there on those J hooks. I don't know if you can see them, but I just sit them up here. Very easy to do. They balance up there, and you keep them out of, off the floor so you don't walk on them, trip over them. Does a great job. We're down here to open up our boat for the season. Uh, mazel tough. Mazel tough. <laughs> This is the one boat we keep outside. So we're have <laughs> yeah. Now Pete built this. This is really nice. This secure. This is a security screen. <laughs> this is a security screen, and he's done a beautiful job. Oop. Does somebody want to grab this? Get the get the bottom one. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear it. And that screen folds in there, and that's a security screen. On windy days. On windy days, it could be an issue, but for the most part, it works pretty good. Gotta go slow. You gotta walk it slow. Not going. Yeah, it's going. Yeah, it's going. It's going. Slow and easy. There you go. Yeah, you got it. And we have a tarp on our boat. Oh, what a job. We have a tarp. Is that a new tarp? Well, yeah, it's newer than the other one that was yeah. there. Yeah. You don't have to move it, Pete. All right, and this boat comes with a, this trailer comes with a swing arm, which is pretty neat. With some heavy duty locks on here. <laughs> Anybody wants to steal this thing, you better come with a freaking jackhammer with a blowtorch and get those locks off of there. <laughs> you know, and we got these bungees that we put on here for the top, which makes it easy to get off and on. And the, the boat, we jack up. This will be demented is at work. <laughs> the boat, we jack up. We take the tires off the ground. It's just like that all winter. But it's fully covered. Fully covered. You want to check the air on the tires? They're probably a little low. <laughs> We're going to check everything. Yeah. They're really yeah. low. We got to put the batteries in. We got to do everything. Good, you be doing the job, right? Yeah. Right. Keeping the creeps, keeping the creeps is out, huh? Eh? Quarrel now. Now just let it cover up. Always well. That's a good way it is, right? As soon as I get up, I'm fine. Fine. Yeah. And then after a few minutes, it kicks in. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm good. I'm mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. good. No, I'm fine right now. I don't yeah. see anything. Yeah. Okay, it's good. Yeah. I'm going to lower it first, I guess. Lower it? Yeah. Got to take it off the... Oh, yeah. We got to take it off the yeah, track. Yeah. Do that first. yeah. Huh? 
tires look good. find that. Oh look, I don't think I had it in my house. I'm looking at the garage. Yeah. Maybe they ended up in there somehow. That's what we keep in the lockers. Keeps the critters away. Mothballs. Mothballs. Keeps the critters away. <laughs> That's it. I'm ready for my take, Demented. That, that is a retired teacher, and that explains everything. Right. <laughs> That's right. Oh yeah, we got some new <laughs> cleats. In the old days, the old ones, we used to wipe the boat down, and they were so sharp on the edges, we used to cut our hands. Now we got these new ones. They pop up. Right, the boat's got a sink. Right? They pop up, and you down them, yes. they slide down. New cleats. Up, down. Beautiful. Beautiful. Another toy for the little boy. <laughs> the guy who puts gear in his boat using wood screws. So what does that tell you? That's a t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> his, his rod holders, wood his cleats, everything is hell of wood screws. Wood screws. <laughs> A million people are going to see that <laughs> and hear it. All right. We're done. So, uh, I think so. Uh, nine